Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company, taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. House Warmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to our country kitchen. We're back from vacation. That was a fun vacation. It was a fun vacation. You know, we caught, we caught crabs. Yum. That could be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> we got five fingers left. You know, those little suckers will pinch you too if they're given the chance. But anyway, we're going to cook them up tonight because they made me mad. One of them tried to pinch me. We did bring them back. We flash froze them. Then we uh, brought them back whole. They're we're delicious. Make a wonderful recipe. They're a little hard to get to. They're not like your Alaskan crab legs. They're a little hard right. to get to. It's some work. It's expensive. You can see why it's expensive when you buy crab meat because it's hard work. But vacation's over. We're back in Kentucky and we're ready to get back to all things Kentucky. You know what? Gardening season is up on us. We have just got our brand new tractor. We've got all our accoutrements for that tractor. We're going to start plowing the garden, planting some plants. We're going to visit Bobby Joe. Oh, good. It's a new season. We're going to Bobby Joe's garden. I like his have garden. Have you seen his garden? He's got a nice garden. Now, he doesn't have a whole lot of space, but what he has there is absolutely beautiful and wonderful. We're even going to talk about gardening tips for folks who live in the city. We're going to have somebody come in and show us about raised gardens. We're going to also visit our neighbors who keep us in stock with domestic rabbit. Yum. Mm, yummy. We're also, last year we raised pigs. Mm -hmm. We loved our pigs. Right. And our pigs... They, they taste very good. They taste very good. And our fingers are as full. But this year, we talked about it last year. You remember our footage about preparing for sheep? Well, we didn't forget that. We're going to have sheep. Who takes care of the sheep? Uh, you? Kelly. Oh, good. But we are going to raise sheep this year. We've got our tractor. We're going to dig some post holes. We're going to set some fence. We're going to talk about different fencing for different critters. We have so much fun stuff coming up. We even have a cool new little place that we're going to cook some. Hmm. Now, of course, we have our patio. Right. And our big green eggs. We have another spot. It's a surprise. Go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check out all our recipes. Check out things you might not have seen before. Our new season is upon us. Most shows do 12 to 15 shows per season. We do twice that, if wow. not more. Now, that being said, we got boiling water while we're putting our little friends in the pot to boil. We've asked people what they want to see, and so many people have said, we want some spicy food. We don't do a whole lot of spicy mm. food. So we're going to visit with some folks who are going to spice it up a little bit. We're going to travel to New Orleans on this particular show and visit with a guy who grew up there and is a legitimate, I mean, he was raised right. up making rouge and all that wonderful stuff. Who's going to make some gumbo. But first, let's visit with a new friend we have. He has restaurants in the Gulfport area, and he also has a television show. 
And he's gonna spice things up with some catfish. Check out our new friend, Rob Stenson. Rob Stenson. Hey, what a pleasure, man. What no, a pleasure. No, no, the pleasure is ours. I was down here the other day and I was like, I want some good seafood. And everybody said this place. I came here and I got what you're cooking right now. Tell us the story behind this recipe. All right, well, this is kind of a fun dish. This is called Catfish Supreme. Gotcha. The Supreme Sauce is a dish we've been doing for years, which is crawfish, shrimp, andouille sausage, garlic, crushed red pepper, kind of a roasted garlic Alfredo. Oh, wow. And then it's served with some fresh mushrooms over crispy catfish. But you can do it as a pasta sauce. It can go over grilled fish. So it's very versatile, and really what happened is we were the first restaurant to reopen after Katrina. Wow. So we were swamped with business. We had to create a dish, and I was like, well, we had fried catfish. We had the supreme sauce. So one day this, you know, got lucky kind of attitude, put the two together. It has absolutely been the most popular dish we've ever done. Now, you have more than one restaurant. We do. We have Back Bay Seafood, obviously, that we're in. We have Salute Italian Restaurant, which is on the Gulf Coast. All these are in Gulfport. We have Lookout Steakhouse. And then we have a really fun kind of hangout you're going to want to go to later called Kelly Sports Pub. Ah. Soon to open our new restaurant in Biloxi, but we can't talk about that yet. So, you know. <laughs> All right, but, now, you're used to doing this television game. You have a show absolutely. down here, you do, I do as well. I do. I actually have a show on public broadcasting called Fit to Eat, right. and we do a segment on ABC TV called Lunch at the Lookout. So we've been doing kind of a lot of fun stuff just like you are. You're the perfect guy for this. Well, I, mean, I don't know about I, that. I don't know how but I found you. Anyhow, so well, what we're going to do now, we got some hot pans here, All right. and what we're going to actually do at this point is kind of start and render down some of this beautiful andouille sausage. So we're going to throw the sausage in and kind of let that get started. We've got, obviously, we're on the Gulf Coast. Right. We have the best seafood, I believe, in the entire country. What we want to do is add a little bit of our olive oil. All right, we're going to add a little bit over on this side. This is going to be some fresh sautéed vegetables. But we're going to take and put our fresh Gulf shrimp right in there. And again, buy domestic. Oh, Got to yeah. buy Absolutely. local fresh shrimp. That's what our show's all about back I, home. I, is it really? Thank goodness, <laughs> yes, man. It's good to absolutely. hear. Absolutely. We like garlic, so that's a normal dose. Wow. All right, obviously the flavoring of the garlic, the shrimp, crawfish are pretty much already cooked. Right. Okay, these are great local crawfish. We're going to add some mushrooms in. Okay, and then all we're doing on this is just kind of fun flipping, getting that flavor going. Let everything kind of blend together, and then before we go too far, we actually add in the crushed red pepper. You so go. you said the spice. Well, that is the spice. Little black pepper, and then the salt in the seafood is normally enough. If somebody really wants to add more salt, you can. So let's have a little fun and kind of throw all this in. I love this dish, too, because it's got such great flavor. Now. I'm really fortunate because we have a wonderful team that's right on the other side of this wall that has taken, can we get a close-up on this beautiful, fresh, Mississippi Delta Pride catfish. All local, right? more local. Local, <laughs> absolutely, local seafood. So here it is raw and fresh. Here it is battered with that beautiful corn flour. And then right up on top, we've got that beautiful, beautiful, oh, golden, crispy, crisp, catfish that you cannot match. So we're going to take this and I'm going to head over to the plate and start this off because it looks so pretty just by itself. And look at those pretty oh, catfish fillets. So we made a nice base of that golden crispy catfish. All right, we got everything kind of cooking here. Now we're going to add into this a little touch of our roasted garlic Alfredo. Oh wow. We're going to come back over here Add a little bit of our magic seasoning, which we don't tell you what that is. You're just going to have to guess, okay? A little pinch of salt. And then in this back pan, throw a little bit more garlic. <laughs> what you say, huh? Tim, you all right with that? I mean, I'm good. I'm, good. I'm hoping you guys like garlic. Have you seen you the health benefits of garlic? Oh, it's incredible, man. I know. Now we throw a nice little kind of variety of fresh veggies that are local farm to table here. That garlic. A little bit of diced onion and some fresh herbs in there to give us some neat flavor, some basil and parsley. 
and toss that all around. So this will be the side for this dish. And how could all these flavors that you just mixed up, how can they not go together just perfectly? Oh, isn't it amazing? And that's funny that the other day, this is, the, this is what I've got. I saw the catfish and I saw the sauce and I thought, you gotta have it. So let's have a little fun with the sauce, all right? It's ready. All right. Beautiful. We want to leave a little of that crispy catfish showing. Let's take some of the veggies and come right on the side here next to it. So they're all fresh, right off the plate. And you got a little lemon on the side. The fresh, crunchy catfish and the catfish supreme. And it's you ready. literally. And, and it. why do we do that in? Real time. Maybe 10 minutes. Right, at the most. 10 minutes. 10 and minutes. And you've got this masterpiece. And I mean, you it's just such a great You know dish. what you don't have? Huh? A fork. Oh, no! <laughs> we got it. Can we a get fork. a fork, guys? <laughs> we need a fork. Look at my guys. And you know what I've noticed down here? Now, we're from Kentucky. We're from the south, but the farther south you go. No, wait, no. The I, no is that, we, we're just trying to figure out Mason Dixie line. I, I've always heard can move up above Kentucky. Well, too, you know? what I'm saying, though, the farther south you go, the nicer the people are. Isn't just the nicest people I've ever run to in my life. All right, here well, goes. it's just such a fun dish. I love that you identified it because it's truly the most popular special we've ever done. That's perfect. Isn't that neat? Isn't that a great dish? Mm -hmm. Thank you, though. I mean, we have a lot of fun with that, man. Absolutely what a, what a wonderful. Pleasure, man. If what you're a down this area, come to this cat. We're going to put some graphics up where his restaurants are. You got to come visit. It's delicious. Thanks so much, man. And your staff are the friendliest people we've ever met in our lives. That's what it's all about Southern hospitality. It's all good. Thank Eat you. local. Thank you very much. Now, I'm telling you what, we went to another one of his restaurants down there. It was a steakhouse. Everything he puts on a plate is magic. It is delicious. If you get down to that part of the country, look him up, look up his restaurants. He has fabulous stuff, and he's yeah. a nice guy. He was nice. What's the next step here in your crabs after they get to boiling? All right, we need to, I have bought some, a French loaf gotcha. of bread, and we're going to go ahead and let's get that in the oven, and we're going to toast it, just brown it up a little bit, because we need that for our stuffing. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going, probably at 350, and we'll just watch it while we're doing everything else. As you go to New Orleans, you have to visit Bourbon Street. You had fun. I hope, that, I hope we show everything that happened on Bourbon Street. You know, there, there was one instance down there. There was this young fella. He was, he was playing the drums. All we had to drink was coffee. Right. Lots of coffee. Right. So I thought I should introduce this young fella, who I was trying to get a reaction out of, right. to some Kentucky hyper-clogging. Is that what you call and that? I give, we give lessons. Yeah, you We do. give lessons um, <laughs> if you're interested in this. And um, the moment struck me. The rhythm hit me. And I wanted to see if I could get a reaction from this kid. And oddly enough, he did not react. No, he did not. some fine dancing. I mean, you're, I thought I represented you're Kentucky good. well. Hey, why don't you do that here? Teach lessons Dinky, here. I think I am. I mean, once people see this, it's going to start a new craze and people right. are going to want to hyper, hyper clog. I'll set all that up and for And they're going to be buying <laughs> flip flops and they're going to be ready to roll. So if you're interested, give us a call. Okay. These are sufficiently boiled and ready to pick while our toast is toasting. And like I said, you tried this down and it was absolutely good. delicious. Now, you say, oh, you can't get these in Kentucky. Well, I'll tell you what you can get. You can get Alaska crab legs. You can also, you don't have to have the shell to do this. You can make a loaf or a patty out of this as right. well. I'd recommend if you want to try this, you could even use Im imitation crab meat right. if you'd like to do such and cheat. Now, while that's going on, let's go visit with a fellow who cooks with a true Louisiana reality. Really? He grew up doing that. He grew up with the ruse and those very specific tastes. So let's visit with this fellow as he cooks us up some real live a gumbo. We are in New Orleans proper with Dr. Jay Addison. All right. Today you're going to make us a gumbo. Right. We're going to make a uh, chicken and andouille gumbo. Uh, it's, it's one of the mainstays of uh, Louisiana cooking, but uh, gumbo is basically, you know, made by starting with a roux, which is a uh, uh, flour in oil mixture. There's several different types of, of roux and um, roux can be a dark, dark roux, which we'll make today. Uh, you can have a medium roux and, and a blonde roux and it just depends on what type of sauce that you're making, whether you're making a, a crawfish etouffee or 
you're making uh, a gumbo, you would use two different types of roux. And roux can be, if, if you've never made one before, it, it can be to get it right, it's tough, but you have kind of a foolproof thing that you do. Right, roux are, uh, and, and some roux are simpler than others, a dark roux requires sitting there on a, on a very hot stove. But I just happened to have a, a cousin who had a, a show and Litton Microwave Company many years ago actually hired her to come up with a, a microwave cookbook. She developed this, this uh, roux uh, in the microwave and it's pretty foolproof and I think anyone in your, in your audience would be able to, uh, to make it first time at home. Step us through that. Well, we'll take uh, two thirds of a cup of flour and two thirds of a cup of the canola oil. And we're gonna put that in the microwave for about six minutes. After that six minutes, we're gonna stir it a little bit. You'll actually be able to smell it. it almost smells like it's burning, but it's a, you know, a very uh, woody odor. Uh, at that time, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna add what we call our trinity. And that's our uh, white uh, onions, bell peppers, green onions, celery, and garlic. And we're gonna add that to this roux, put it back in there for just a couple of minutes and let it cook. And then we'll take that out, add it to our pot. And then as that's uh, sitting in the pot, I'm gonna microwave uh, some chicken stock and we'll add that chicken stock as we go. Always wanna make sure that when you're adding stock or water to the, a roux mixture, that it has to be hot, otherwise, the flour will separate out and it'll be a, a lumpy mess. And I'm gonna put uh, about uh, four cups of chicken uh, broth and then I'll add some vegetable stock to that as it's, as it's cooking. Then Again, we'll, hot. It's gotta, hot. Be, it's gotta be hot. Right. Uh, we're gonna add the chicken, which is, uh, actually I had cooked this chicken last night uh, on, uh, you know, on my ceramic grill to kind of give it a little bit of a smoky flavor. And then we're gonna add some mandouille sausage to that, some bay leaves, and it's just gonna sit there on the stove and simmer for a little bit. I mean, you've picked stuff that you can get in, in Kentucky. You can get smoked sausage or whatever sure. you put in. You know, gumbo is everything, you know, to- and Leftovers? Perfect what, for leftover ex chicken? Ex exactly, and, and or leftover turkey at Christmas time. So it's kind of like burgoo, no rules, just whatever. There, there is no rules, the, the, it all starts with the room mm -hmm. and, uh, and anything goes after that. There's uh, okra gumbo and there's filet gumbo. So the okra came with the, you know, with the first African Americans from, from Africa, the sassafras root from the Native Americans here. Uh, you wouldn't use the two together. Right. But uh, the great thing about the okra, uh, it disappears in the gumbo. And uh, I'll add uh, some tomatoes because the city will take some of that slime out of the okra. So we're going to get it nice and hot, almost burnt. We'll uh, get our okra in there. So this is, uh, from, from this point forward, other than making the rice, this is pretty much done. Wow. We'll just let that uh, simmer and, and we can actually start prepping uh, the, red, the red fish. What, is your, what are you going to do for us today? Well, we're going to do, do it a little bit different. We're going to take uh, the red fish, still has the scales and the skin on it. So we call this uh, red fish on the half shell. I'm going to make a, just a little bit of sauce with some of the trinity that we had used, a little olive oil, a little butter, and we'll base that. We'll take some lemons and slice them up, lay them on top of there cooks really fast and uh, we're going to take it we're going to take it outside and we'll cook it in uh, the ceramic uh, grill and ceramic cooker as soon as the fish gets a little bit flaky we'll take it off and it'll be ready to go i like the sound of that thank you again sir You're for quite visiting welcome. with us yeah, now glad to have you. here comes the tough part of my job That makes my taste buds happy. Oh, good, good. Oh, man. I'm gonna try a piece of this fish. Look how white and flaky that is. That is maybe the best redfish I've ever had. Thank you so much. In a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my Neanderthal face on. There you go. Right Thank you so much for spending time with us, inviting us into your home, and preparing for us a wonderful Louisiana classic dish or two. All right, it's time to chow. There you go, <laughs> go for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
All right, now let's talk about our Facebook page. Nikki gets on me because I'm on Facebook a lot. I like no. it. Yeah, we are. Really? But you know what? You can find out all kinds of things on Facebook. We share we recipes. We find out about new restaurants. We set up shoots from mm -hmm. Facebook. It's true. Go to our Facebook page. Check it out. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it. And then follow us around. You know what? The, the uh, tiny country kitchen is going to be traveling around. We're going to be cooking some barbecue in there. We'll tell you where we're going. All right, what do you got to do to your crabs here? All right. We're gonna, the best part of the meat is these claws. Mm -hmm. But when I broke them, you'll see when we break them up, they're almost like a, when you get a crab cluster in the mm -hmm. middle. And we're gonna clean the shells out, so. And we were down there, she had a, something like this, but smaller mm -hmm. in their place. So, so yeah. basically, you're just, you're just pulverizing this and pulling this out. Right. Now, when you buy lump crab meat, you wonder why it's $20 for a little container? Hey, look, that's uh, it. That's why. That because it's piece. very labor intensive. So this is where Nikki goes into hyperdrive, fast speed. All right, here's our book that we got from down there. It's a great book. Yeah, The Gulf Gourmet. All right, and this is called Stuffed Crabs. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a half a recipe. Mm -hmm. You can see how much time it took us. We actually did all those crabs, but we're only going to stuff five of them. Right. And that took a long time. So I can see why it's so expensive. And again, you can do this with crab can, right. crab meat. Uh, you don't have to have the shell for presentation. You can make a loaf or a patty out right. of it, and it'll work just fine. And it says that. So, I'm going to put you some olive oil in here. Alrighty. And I'm going to go ahead and cut up some pepper for us. All right. Perfect. We're good. Let's toss it. Is it ready? Get that going for you. And we want them crunchy, not all the way cooked, it says. All right. Keep them a little bit crunchy. Ooh, that smells good. And it's nice and brown. You're going to soak it just like your grandma used to do. She used to do this. For, pretty much, we're just making a stuffing. I'm going to just put a little water in this. All right, we're there. We're there? Yep. You ready? ready? Looks good because now we have our crab in here, our bread, okay. and our those vegetables smell good. I don't know. Nice and crunchy. That's what they want. Okay, I'm going to beat you an egg. Thank you. Just one? Yeah, we're doing half yeah, recipe. Yeah, doing half recipe. This is going to hold things together. All right, I got your eggs Alrighty. all beaten up. Bless your little hearts. Uh -huh. Those are from our chickens. They are. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to let you season it. It calls just salt and pepper, but you're... Go ahead and do yeah, your thing. You know what? I'm going to put just a little bit of Old Bay in there to me. It smells good. And it smells good already. Just a little bit of that adds that wonderful seafood flavor. And just a tad of this nature seasoning, which I really like. And be adventurous with your flavors. All right. This looks pretty good. It does what look do pretty good. And we're being fancy. What I did is I go ahead and cleaned. You know, they're kind of nasty mm -hmm. with their live balls. But it's just kind of cute. They're kind of cute. Right, they're kind of cute. And we're going to fill them up. If you wanted, we could, like you said, make patties or... If, uh, if you want to buy some lump crab meat, you can do that. If you want to take some crab legs or some artificial crab meat, you can do this. All right, here we go. A little bit of breadcrumbs. So let's just sprinkle it with some breadcrumbs. And I well, I just want to go ahead and put a little cheese. It didn't call for that, but you know how we like to add our own thing. Just a little bit of any kind of cheese you like. Pop her in. Let's cook it up. And this just says cook till it's brown, so we're going to watch it until it looks long. bubbly. Ta-da! Mm. Those look good. Fork, Mrs. Farmer? They look pretty. They are pretty. Now, here's the deal. They're going to be hot. You're going to eat out of the patty? Ooh, smell that. The pepper and celery is already, mm. I haven't even tasted it yet, but I know it's going to taste like because we already had them and they're really good. You know, they in the restaurants down there, they serve little sides like this, didn't they, a lot? It's oh, good. Oh, man. Oh, yummy. Look at my cute little bowl, though. You know what? We had a great vacation, but yeah, again, we did. we're back. If anybody is interested in hyper, it's, it's called Kentucky hyper clogging. Show us a little All bit. All requires, no, I'm, I'm too busy eating right okay. now. All it requires is a pair of knee length shorts, mm -hmm. a pair of flip flops. You gotta uh, flip have those flops. shorts? Well, it's kind of like okay. that. Flip flops and a lot of coffee. Okay. <laughs> but until next week, uh, from our kitchen to yours, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. Next 
Special thanks to Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Market and Cafe, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, and Weisenberger Mill. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life.